No, my network is uh, very fast. Eh? Ah, yeah, it has started. I think uh, some people were not accepting the recording, so now it has started. Okay, so I'll share the screen. So can you see my screen? Yes. 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 Good. So last time we talked about automorphisms. So I, I don't know if you have any questions on this. Did you understand everything? Or should we repeat this section? You can do a recap. This one is hard to do a recap. You, usually either you repeat or for the next, we have another very exciting topic ahead, these subgroups. You don't want to go ahead, but. So um, I think we, we looked at homomorphisms and automorphisms as well. So maybe maybe I can just focus uh, start from this section on automorphisms. Is that okay? Yeah. So, but, but you need to find time to read so that when I say something like automorphism, it's very clear in your mind what that means. Eh? The class is much so, more useful so, to you when you remember these things. Eh? You're saying? So, aut automorphism, uh, if two groups are isomorphic, then... Uh, they qualify to be an automorphism. No, it's not the groups that are an automorphism. It is the homomorphism that is an automorphism. Okay, the map, not the groups. The groups will be, and it's not two groups actually. It's the same group. The map is from the group to itself. Are we together? Yes. Okay. So automorphism means from the group the, the map is from the group to itself. It is a homomorphism and it is a bijective homomorphism. So you, you need to get all these things uh, internalized. You, do, you don't do guesswork with this. Don't try any guesswork. If you can't remember something, simply go back to the notes. Don't be ashamed to go back to the notes. Eh? I will not tell anyone if you go back. Eh? Nego? Nego, Nego. 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 Don't be ashamed to go back to your notes. Anytime you see a term here, don't do any guesswork. Guesswork will give you zero. Simply go back to the notes and and read the definition. That, that's that's how I get them. I don't get them from the air. I get them from the notes. So anyway, we, we proceed. Uh, and a good thing also, try to get your book, exercise book, and have a pen or a pencil, whichever you, is more comfortable for you. And make sure you do some writing. Uh, mathematics requires you to write if you want to, if you want to learn it effectively. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we, um, I don't know whether we should, uh, I think we, we did define homomorphisms and did a lot of work on that. So I'll just start from this section on automorphisms. So um, remember, it's possible to define more than one uh, homomorphism from a group to itself. So, and uh, therefore, if you collect all the different homomorphisms, and then out of those, you just pick the automorphisms, then we end up with this set, this set that we call 
automorphisms of G. This 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 is the shorthand for that. This A U T is short for automorphisms, and they are the automorphisms of G. So this is a set that contains all the automorphisms of G. And uh, it's so what you need to get in your mind is that it's possible to define more than one automorphism on a given group. So if you collect all the different ones, we we will create a new set, the automorphisms of G. So let's see what happens with these automorphisms. If you pick any three automorphisms of G, then we, we notice the following one. We, we know very well this one we saw earlier, the composition of any two uh, isomorphisms is an isomorphism. So an automorphism is just an isomorphism, an isomorphism from a group to itself. We already saw this earlier. If you do that, that will always be the case. So I don't need to repeat this proof because this is simply the proof that the composition of two isomorphisms is an isomorphism as well. The difference now with the, with the previous proof is that the map is from the group G to itself. We also saw earlier, and this one you have done before in your first year, the composition of maps is associative. You can put your brackets anywhere uh, and that should work as long as the domains are well defined. Then um, the next one is the identity map, which is defined by, by this I. We call it I. This small I here is, is a, a map from G to itself <clears throat> and it maps every element to itself. It sends x to x. This one is also an automorphism of G. And if you compose this map with any other automorphism, you, it, it doesn't change the automorphism. It remains intact. Either you have it on the left or the right, it still works. You can check this, that if you compose any map with the identity map, you don't change the map itself. And last but not least, um, this uh, automorphism, the, any automorphism, since it's a bijective map, it must be invertible. And we saw earlier that the inverse of an isomorphism is also an isomorphism. And actually does exist because the map is bijective. The inverse is, turns out to be an isomorphism from G to itself, and therefore will also be an automorphism. And if you compose the, any map with its inverse, you will get the identity map. Uh, I should have added equals to I here. So it will, you'll get the identity map. Now on this, this now gives you the conclusion that the set of all automorphism of a group is a group under the composition of functions because it satisfies all the required properties, the four properties that we need are all satisfied. So this is something you need to spend time on and uh, go through it slowly and try to work through it with your pen and paper. So here is a small lemma which we can prove. It says um, if G is a fixed element in the group, we define a map where this is phi subscript G of X is equal to G X G inverse. So it picks any element X and this is what it does to that element, multiplies by G on the left and multiplies by G inverse on the right. So G is fixed, G does not change at all. The only thing that will be changing are the arguments here, X. The, the, this X are elements picked from G. Um, so it turns out that uh, this map is an automorphism of G called uh, the inner automorphism of G. So to check that a map is an automorphism, first of all, you need to confirm that it's a homomorphism and it's bijective. Uh, we already know that it's a map from G to itself because this, this uh, the way it's defined here simply takes elements from G and sends them to an element in G. So. <clears throat> to prove that it's an automorphism, you must check that it's an 
a homomorphism and that it is bijective. So those are the two things we need to check. So the first thing is to simply check that it's a homomorphism. And this is what happens here. If you pick uh, any two elements from G, the image of their products turns out to be the product of the image of X and the image of Y. And that's the definition of a homomorphism. So this map is a homomorphism from G to itself. Um, you can follow through the steps. Here, if you apply the map to this product X, Y, you have to do exactly what the map does. It multiplies by G on the left and multiplies by G inverse on the right. So that's precisely what we will do here. And uh, <clears throat> we can do some more manipulation. We add the identity element between X and Y. That gives us uh, G inverse G. We can write it in that form. That's just the identity element, but this is convenient for this uh, part. We can use associativity to put our brackets anywhere we want. And here we, again, we put them strategically to solve our problem. So on this end, you will realize that this is just the image of uh, X under this map. And this one is just the image of Y under the same map. Hence, we can conclude that the image of a product of X and Y is the same as, is actually equal to the products of the image of X and the image of Y. So that makes it a homomorphism. We are together up to that point. Hello, you can hear me? Yes, we are following. Yeah, we, we can hear. Actually, we are following. That's good. So, so we conclude that this map is a homomorphism. So um, also today, I, I have a meeting at some point. So maybe we'll stop a few minutes after nine. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So we also observe the following about the map. Eh? If... Um, the image of X under this map is equal to the image of Y. Then what this means is that uh, the image of X is just this, GX, G inverse. It will be equal to the image of Y, which is GY, G inverse. So if you apply the cancellation laws, both the left and the right cancellation laws, the one we learned uh, in the earlier lectures, you will end up, you will conclude that X must be equal to Y. So, but now this means the map is injective. This is how you check that the map is injective so we have shown that the map is a homomorphism we have also shown that it's injective so what's left is to show that it is subjective as well so if you pick any x in g we, we need to find a pre-image for it under this map for us to claim that it is subjective so we realize we can construct a pre-image uh, so if you if you apply this map to this element this is just an element of g so it's, it's it's in the it's in g because you're multi this is a product of elements in g so if you apply the map to this element in g you get x for any x you pick in g this will work so it means the map is is subjective there's no element that is left out by the map so we have shown the map is a homomorphism. We have shown it is injective. And now we have shown that it is also subjective. And therefore we can conclude that it is an automorphism. Are we together? No. Hmm? No, how are you coming up with this? Uh, Wait, well, it works. You look for something that works. You have to construct it. Just you look at the way the map is constructed. I think here there's a problem. Eh? The way I've written this, this should be G inverse and G on this side. So to check that a map is uh, subjective, I need to pick some any element I pick from the uh, core domain. I need to show that I can find a pre-image in the domain. That's how I show that the map is subjective. So here, if I pick any element, here in this case, it happens that 
each element. Yeah. I mean, the domain and the core domain are the same set. So I just need to find another element in the same set, which is mapped to any other element I pick from G. And that's what I have done based from the definition of a map. So this is just by observation. I observe that if I get the image of this map, I will get X for any X I pick from G. So here there's a mistake. They, they, this should be G inverse and this should be... Uh, what about the other G on the... Just, just hold on. Right. Yeah, th this one should be inverse here. And this one should be G. There's a typo here. Because this should be G. If you look at the map, what the map does is it multiplies by G on the left and G inverse on the right. Okay. Excuse me, sir. I think from the handout to that. Pardon? Can you complete the question, please? Someone who was talking, but we have lost him again. Maybe you can ask the question later. Okay. Hmm? Right. Uh, you, you need to ask yes, what is I, I, I was saying that from the handout that you gave us, um, what is happening? You 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 have problems with audio or network? Hmm. So now the other thing about uh, you, you have done mathematics for three years now. So now you should be able to tell when a mistake has been done. So anything that does not, don't just copy everything as if it's a gospel truth. Make sure you double check everything. Uh, the, you are being taught by a fellow human being. So the human being cannot be perfect. Eh? So in the process of making the notes, it's possible I can make a mistake. So you need to use your, your mathematical ability, which you developed over the last uh, three years now. Apply it. Don't, don't, don't sit uh, like a, someone who is completely helpless. You should be able to see where there's a mistake or something that does not make sense. And the way you're able to do that is to make sure you read the previous notes and understand everything. If you understand everything from the previous uh, sections of a class, So uh, the gentleman who was asking a question seems to have uh, lost network or something. So if you see a mistake in the notes, the handwritten notes, you correct it or you call me to tell me why is this like this, okay? You can send me a message. You can, you can also ask people in the class, the ones who have read and they will help you. It has Your to contact be contact. Okay. Um, so the easiest way to see that you are, there are mistakes in the notes is to try to write everything as we go along. And then you test it yourself. So uh, make sure you note the, if you're writing things down, I am trying to, I've made some corrections here. Hopefully you have noted that down, but I will correct that before I share the slides. So this one should be G inverse, oh, sorry. This should be G inverse and this should be G. And this one on the extreme right should be G inverse. Are we together? Together. And how did you come up with them, Malim? Yes. Just a question. You, you, uh, you, uh, you, 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 some of these things you construct. You look at a map and you see what, what, which, what element can I construct that would be mapped to X. So I see what does a map do? It multiplies by G on the left and multiplies by G inverse on the right. So if I have a, an element which is G inverse here, if I multiply by G on the left, I will get rid of, sorry, if I yes, multiply by G on the left, right, I will get rid of this, right? If I multiply by G inverse, because this one is just supposed to be G, it's a type typing error. If I multiply by G inverse on the right, I will get rid of this G inverse and I will be left with X. That is simply how you do it. You think, 
these things you have to think. Eh? You have to spend time on this thing. You, you cannot uh, learn this. This is not like uh, high school or primary school mathematics where everything is fixed. You have to think. So um, maybe we can add a, a the, on the title page, we can add something, a requirement for the class that the thinking is not optional. Then we ask you to sign. Is that okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. So you, a lot of these things you have to just construct. Look at uh, this map. How, what element, if I pick an element in G, X in G, what map, w w which element under the construction? Mandatory. Mm. Yeah. Mandatory, yeah? <laughs> yes. Okay. So, uh, so spend some time on this. I will correct the sections that are, are wrong before I share their slides. So consider the set uh, of all in automorphism. So suppose we pick any two in automorphism. So this again should be, I was to correct it, but I haven't. So these two elements should be from the set of automorphisms. So this should not be G. This should be this set, the automorphisms of G. So if you pick any two automorphisms of G, it turns out uh, two inner automorphisms in this particular case. Um, may maybe what I forgot to add here is we were specifically talking about the inner automorphisms. Uh, and we showed that it's a bijective map and uh, we subjective as well so that was covered so here we also observe the following if the product of any two inner automorphisms is also an inner automorphism right so if i get the the composition of two inner automorphisms the inner automorphism determined by g and the inner automorphism determined by h i end up with another inner automorphism determined by the product of G and H. Are we together on that? So there is a lot of work in between. Because if you get the composition of these two, this is what you will do. Uh, this, this becomes the argument for the inner automorphism determined by G. But we know how this is defined, so we can just replace it with HX, H inverse. That's how we define this inner automorphism. And we also know how the inner automorphism determined by G is defined. So we can simply replace this by the definition. We put G on this side and G inverse on that side. Then we use our knowledge of uh, associative property uh, and uh, put the brackets anywhere we want. In this case, conveniently, around GH and around H inverse, G inverse. And we realize that from the work we did earlier, H inverse G inverse is the same as the inverse of GH. Remember the order here is reversed. Notice that. Here the H comes first, here the G comes first. But here you, the brackets are on the outside and the inverse is on the outside as well. So if you look at this, this is just the inner automorphism of the group determined by the product of G and H. So it's just another inner automorphism, and the element that determines this new inner automorphism is a product of G and H. So essentially, the product of two inner automorphisms turns out to be an inner automorphism as well. Are we together? Yes. So this uh, set of inner automorphisms is closed under composition of functions. So we are trying to check that the set of all inner automorphisms is a group under composition of functions. So we know that uh, composition of functions is associative, so that one will just state it as uh, the truth. We will not prove this, but you have done this in uh, basic mathematics. We also know that the identity map uh, is an inner automorphism and it will act as an identity element in the group. 
And uh, if, if the inverse of an inautomorphism determined by G will simply be the inautomorphism determined by the inverse of G. So every map here is invertible, and the inverse turns out to be an inautomorphism as well. Again, I did not delete this S. I really need to go through this. This S should not be there. So, but essentially what we have shown here is that, uh, we'll go back one step. We've shown that the set of all in automorphism is called closed under composition of functions. So any two, composition of any two in automorphisms gives you another in automorphism. And then the next, we, this is just true for functions in general. So composition of functions will be associative. And, um, <clears throat> Also, the identity map turns out to be an inner automorphism, and it's the inner automorphism determined by the identity element, E. Um, and it, it works as the identity element of, of this uh, group. And any... Uh, and uh, we see that uh, we see that the inner automorphism determined by G inverse turns out to be the inverse of the inner automorphism determined by G. How do you tell that uh, a map is the inverse? You get the composition of that map with the given map, and you should get the identity map. So if you compose this inner automorphism determined by G, with the inner automorphism determined by G inverse, you will get the identity. And this is precisely what happened. See, the, this is the map that acts on X and give you X again. That is the identity map. The composition of these two inner automorphism gives you the identity map. So that means this map must be the, uh, this map here, the, in automorphism determined by G inverse must be the inverse of the in automorphism determined by G. So we have checked all the four properties again for a group, and therefore we conclude that the set of all in automorphisms of a group is is uh, is a group again under composition of functions. Are, are we together so far? I think there are some people trying to join. I can admit them before we proceed. Any questions so far? Hello, you can hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um... Yes, they are following. There, there are a few latecomers. Let me allow them in. So, uh... So we define a map as follows. We have already established that the set of all in automorphisms of a group turns out to be a group under composition of functions. We already know that G is a group. It was picked to be a group anyway. Now we define a map from G to this set of all in automorphisms of G. So this map will pick an element in G and it will send that element to the in automorphism of G determined by the small g. This, this small g is an element in G. And this is the inner automorphism of G determined by this small element G. So we know we, we can check that this map is a, a homomorphism as follows. Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you clearly. Very clearly, okay, that's good. Thank you. 
So uh, the, the, if you pick any two elements in G, what will be their image under the, the image of their product under this map? So they, they, what, what does the map do? It simply picks an element, sends it to the inner automorphism determined by that element. So if you give it AB, it will give you the inner automorphism determined by the product of AB. But we already seen earlier, um, I think we saw this earlier. Maybe we haven't done it in this class. We must have done it in last last class. But the inner automorphism determined by AB is simply equal to the composition of the inner automorphism determined by A uh, composed with the inner automorphism determined by B. So um, again, I've changed the symbol here. Um, the correct symbol to use is this one here, but for some reason I have changed them here. I'll need to correct it. This is a symbol that you need to continue with. It's the same symbol too. Mm. Um, so uh, just give me one minute. I need to attend to something here in the office. Then we continue. You can hear me? Yes. 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 Okay, so here there's a problem with the notation. This this symbol phi, this symbol phi is the one that I should use throughout. I should not change the symbol. Something happened midway here. Um but I'll correct it. But note that down that this is the correct symbol to use. So you continue with phi and phi and phi here. Um, no, no, no. I think it's fine. There's no problem. There's no problem. The symbol is correct. Because this, this map is different from this one. Yeah, it's correct. What, what happens is that this map picks G and sends it to the inner automorphism determined by G. So this one, this phi is this map here. So it will send AB to the inner automorphism determined by AB. It's correct. There's no nothing to change here. And we saw earlier that the inner automorphism determined by AB is simply the inner automorphism determined by A composed with the inner automorphism determined by, by B, which is equal to... Now, under this map, this inner automorphism is the image of A, and this inner automorphism here determined by B is just the image of B. So this map is actually automorphism. So there's not nothing to fix here. Everything is fine. Are we together? Yes. Mm. Yeah, There's yes. no correction to be done. So um, <clears throat> we can try to compute the kernel of this map. Eh? The kernel of this map here. So the, we know that the, the kernel of uh, this homomorphism is simply the set of all elements in G which are mapped onto the identity in this group, the automorphisms of G. <clears throat> so we so we, we need to find all elements in G which are mapped onto the identity map of G. So we need to find all inner automorphisms which behave like the identity map, right? 
That's the second line. It shows us all the inner topophysins which behave like the identity map. And this is equal to, um, um, if you apply the definition of the inner automorphism determined by X, what you will have here is X, G, X inverse. And since it's supposed to be the identity map, that must be equal to G. So you can leave it like this, or you can choose to rewrite it as X in G, such that X, G is equal to G, X. So this is uh, the, <clears throat> the kernel of this map is usually called the center of G. And uh, it's simply the set of all elements in G that commute with all other elements in G. So I pick any element X in G and uh, check if it commutes with all the other elements. If it does, then it belongs to the center of the group. If it commutes with some and doesn't commute with others, then it doesn't commute with the, all other elements. So one, one thing to note is that this set will never be empty because it will always contain the identity element of G. Remember, under uh, homomorphism, uh, I mean, the identity element will always commute with all other elements of G. So the identity element will always be one of the elements in the center, or it can also be the only element in the center of a group. But it must be in the center. So the center will never always have at least one element, and that is the identity element of the group. So this, this is just a repetition of what we have said, the center, how you can, you can also define the center of a group without thinking about the map uh, from G to the group of inner automorphisms of G. You can ignore that map completely and simply define the center like this. This will still work. So because here we have looked at it as the kernel of a homomorphism, you don't have to look at it that way. You can also just define the center without considering the hom homomorphism at all. The center of a group is simply the set of all elements in G that will commute with all other elements of G. There are advantages sometimes when you think of it as a kernel that can be useful in some situations. But where it is not useful, you can just use this as a definition of a center. So we already said that it can contain, it must contain the identity element, but it may have other elements, including the identity element. So the identity element must be in it. It may be the only one in some cases, but the other cases where a group may have more than one element. The identity. So I already talked told you about the center of B3 and B4, the dihedral group of degree 3 and uh, degree 4. So your work was to check that these are indeed the centers of the group. So you were to check that B3, in B3 you have the identity element as the only element that commutes with all the other elements in the group. You must have checked that. Eh? There's no other element which will commute with all the other elements other than the identity. So the center of D3, the dihedral group of degree three, consists of just the identity element. If you check the dihedral group of degree four, there's only one element, and that is A squared, which will commute with all the other elements. You can check this and ask you to complete the multiplication table for this group. By now, you must have done that, and you can easily check that in using that table, the only elements that commute with all the other elements, other than the identity, is this element, A squared. And that should be the 180 degrees rotation, if I'm not wrong. So the center of uh, D4 is, uh, has two elements. That's E and A squared. Now, if you have an abelian group like uh, the integers, you see at the bottom here, we have the center of uh, the group of integers. Now, when we just write a group of integers without any binary operation, the underlying assumption is that the binary operation is addition because the group of integers is always a group under addition. Under multiplication, we saw that earlier that it will not be a group for various reasons. So you can't, it would be, it would be strange to think of multiplication as a binary operation here because it will not be a group in any, 
in any case. So the center of uh, the group of integers under addition is just the whole group because the group, the whole group is is abelian or commutative. So the center of an abelian group is always the whole group. So um, that covers the section on uh, homomorphisms. Um, we might uh, use them again later, but for now, I think that that covers what we needed from this topic. Are there any questions on this? just have a question on how to prove the associative property of the image and the kernel of a group. So what is the question you're answering? Uh, like uh, when we are checking the properties of a group. What is the question you're answering? Uh, Set, you need to have a clear question first. So wh whatever you're trying to do, what, what are you trying to answer? Uh, like the image of a okay let me let me check let me check again it's, it's very important to learn to express yourself properly so you don't uh, ask a question and uh, you force someone to try to read your mind you, you need to start from the beginning make it very clear what you are uh, trying to do and then you ask the question knowing that the image of a, a group is a subgroup in a maybe g prime in the codomain so how do we uh, prove for the uh, the associative property it's just inherited because it's sitting inside a group the group uh, is associative already uh, the binary operation in the group is associative there's nothing to prove. It's already associative because it's sitting inside the group. So we just write it that way it is, that the image is a... It is inherited. A, yes. I've given you the reason. There's nothing else to write. Since you already know it's a group and you're not changing the binary operation, you will not lose that property if you're working with a subset of the group. Are we together? Okay, thank you. Yes. You have, you have actually understood or uh, you are just saying thank you so that uh, we stop the class? I've understood. You have no. said it is a subgroup. It's already in there. We, we, we have not said it's a subgroup. I've said it's a subset. Subset, we'll learn about subgroups later. We have not learned that. Eh? But any subset uh, will... Okay. any. Any subset will still obey that associative law because the elements in the subset come from the group and the binary operation you're using is the same one used in the group, which is associative. So if you're working with a smaller subset, you don't lose that property. Are we together? I think I... I would uh, rather stop there instead of starting a new topic. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Under the previous page, can you go back? The, okay, under this page where you have indicated that, let, let y be the image of d. Can you use the y equal to g x g inverse to be y equal to g y g inverse? Or what, why do you the, want to use y? Because if, uh, if, if, if y is in the is is an element in the image of, of this homomorphism, it means it must be of this form. Because how what does this homomorphism do? It picks a, an element x from g and send it sends it to this g x g inverse. So any element in the image will take this form because of the way you've defined the inner automorphism, right? Yes. So if anything is in the image, it must be of this form because this is how you 
how the automorphism is defined. So if y is in the image, it must take this form. It must be the image of some element x in G, right? Okay. So if you, if you put y here, it means you are say, telling me that every element is its own image, which is not the, the true. Okay, I understood it. Hmm. So um, any any other questions? That prove that the, the identity function is an inner automorphism. Okay, let's. Uh... Yes. Now, what what is the identity function? Identity function is simply a map that sends each element to itself. So if if I get the inner automorphism determined by E, let's go back to the definition. Here is the definition of a inner automorphism, right? If I change this to the identity element, it means X will be mapped onto X. So my map now becomes just the identity map because it will map every element to itself. Because if I have E here and E here, they don't change anything. So that if, if I have this as E, the inner automorphism determined by the identity element is just the identity map. It will map every evidence, it will take every element to itself. Okay, okay. So you can see why I told you. Yeah, thinking is mandatory. Yeah? Hmm. Akuna Wepuka. Any other question? So questions are also mandatory. You must ask questions. If you ask a question, you get another question. Yes, you, if you yes. ask a question, you get zero point one mark in the I have a question on the same page you have just been. I go where the the map of I is mapping G onto G. I yes. The map of I. Map you know, of I. Is, is mapping. Mapping. Where G is mapped on the, it's on G. The identity map the identity is defined map like, this. like this. It's, 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 it's actually a map from the to itself, <laughs> and it picks every, every element and maps that map element to itself. Okay. okay. That's how we define That's the identity we map. The identity. So continue so your question. It's already answered, Molly. I've, I, see, I, I've I, seen what I, uh, I, mm. Oh. Okay, you've seen where the problem was. Eh? Yes. Mm. So again, it's very important that you are familiar with all this notation. You learned all these things in the uh, first year. So it's important that you go back and look at the notation. There's sometimes if you don't understand the notation, this will not make sense. So, but this simply is how you define a map. It's a map. This G is the domain, and G is again the core domain. I is the map itself, and this is a domain, and that's the core domain. So that's how you represent it. Any map in particular. That's how you present it, not just automorphisms. Um, any more questions? Uh, is subgroup the last topic? Oh, no, no. We, we, you have uh, this, this is a very exciting course. Man. There's plenty of topics ahead. And I have shared the previous notes, the notes from the previous class, uh, the ones that were handwritten. By now, if you have checked, you will see it goes up to lecture 15. So it means you have not checked. I've only checked it, uh, the lecture, up to lecture 5. Hmm? I've checked up to le lecture 5. Then you stopped there? No, I'm still going on. Or you want to stop there? <laughs> 
Now I, I have shared uh, uh, a list of questions. There's a tutorial which was sent also in the same folder. If you have uh, really looked at the folder by now, you should have seen the tutorial. So you are you are taking a very casual approach to this class. Eh? You 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 have a whole set of notes and things to look at, but you are not looking through them. They are not available. The the, the tutorials fine. Hmm? Maybe. Also in the same in the same folder. Also in the same folder, there is a set of typed notes. And in, in that set of typed notes, at the end of every chapter, there are questions for you. You, you really need to take responsibility on your own for this. Eh? No, you are now big boys and girls. You can't be told to do everything. Eh? Pick, you, you have the power. You are now in third year. You are not in uh, under, uh, in first year anymore for high school. Eh? Pick the book. There's a textbook, uh, not really a textbook, a, a set of typed notes in that folder, the folder that I shared. And uh, inside there, there is, a, in that set of typed notes, there are questions at the end of every chapter. So if you are looking for questions, you have so many. Finish those ones, then you ask for more. So you okay, go back sure. to the beginning. Hmm? Maswali Me... Mesha. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So it's very important that you you grow up. Moving eh? third year, stop. You need to move away from the first year mentality or high school mentality. 